Oh, hello. Afternoon, faithful viewer. Sorry, I was just perving. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to recommend you some LGBTQI books that I've um, read in the past, which I thought were quite good and you might consider. Um, I feel I'm very close to that camera, so I apologise. You're getting a close up today. So that being said, we'll crack on. So the first one I've got to show you is The Geography Club by Brent Hartinger. Now this is um, about a, a school student called um, Russell Middlebrook, couldn't get that out there. Um, what he decides to do in his high school is set up a LGBTQIA group, but he calls it the Geography Club because he hopes that it can be somewhere they can go and sort of be themselves and not need to worry about the outside world. And he reckons if you call it the Geography Club, it's kind of boring and no one will really, no one will really notice. As well as that, you also get the um, storyline of his first love in high school, which um, is quite nice. It's a very quick read, very quick read, it's quite short. Uh, you could probably knock it out in an hour or two. Why I like it is there's a lot of sort of nostalgia elements to it. There's a lot of things in this book which I can relate to. Um, so that's why I like it, so I would recommend that. It's the first in the series, so um, there's a few books after that. So there we go. So the next one I'm going to show you is Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. As you can see, this is up for, or was up for the um, Costa Book of the Year 2016. I read this in November, I think, and I absolutely loved it. It's set during the American Indian Wars and then later the American um, Civil War. And it falls to friends who sort of navigate that that time period. You see what happens to them, the... Um, how they get close. Um, the war scenes are pretty hellish, pretty brutal, um, pretty grim, really descriptive. But along with that you get the sort of quieter character moments between the two main characters with their friends and with their um, adopted daughter. Um, it's very gripping, very engrossing. I thought it was fantastic. It's one of the best books I've read in quite some time. Um, so I would recommend that. So that's that. So next up, we have Tin Man by Sarah Winman, and this is one of the best books I've read this year, and I just thought it was fantastic, and it's the story of two friends, uh, they grow up together, they get kind of close, very close, um, and then a sort of girl joins the group, and you see how that affects the dynamic of the group. Um, I wouldn't, not necessarily in a bad way, she's not a bad person or anything like that. It's just it's interesting how that sort of affects her relationship. Um, it's very touching, very moving. Um, and it's a sort of unrequited love story, I think. I think that's what you would call it. Um, but I really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend that. Next up... Um, and this is a bit of a funny one actually because I've only just finished this in the last couple of days and I'm still sort of processing what I think of it. But I'll show you it anyway. That's Patrick Ness's release. And this follows a character called Adam uh, who feels like his world's falling apart. His friends are moving away. Um, his first love is moving away. That's an interesting one. Um, he doesn't know how he feels about his new boyfriend, which is a bit of a shame because I like Linus. He gets a hard time off his family who are like super religious. Um, that's quite interesting as well. As well as that story, you also get a sort of story running along beside it of um, a sort of fairy queen who is trapped in our world and is trying to get back, but she's on a mission herself. Um, and you've got that running along with it. I'm not entirely sure how how well the two of them work together. Um, I think the author was going for a sort of big glorious ending. And I don't quite know if he pulled it off, but if anybody out there has read this, let me know what you thought. Because I'm, like I say, I'm a bit conflicted because I really like Adam's story. I just don't know about the other thing. I don't know if that was really necessary. But there we go. Let me know what you think. Next up, 
we have, you've probably seen this before on my channel because I absolutely love this book. History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. Uh, and this is a bit of another downer, to be honest, this one. Um, this follows Griffin, who is dealing with the loss of his best friend and his first boyfriend. Um, you see how that affects him, he sort of... Well, he has OCD, he sort of has anxiety. Um, it's really touching, actually. I think he's a wonderful character. He's very he's a flawed character, I'll say that. Um, but I think everybody's really lovely in this book. Um... As well as that, you get the sort of run-up to the accident that claims his boyfriend's life. Um, which I think the two of them together, unlike with release, I think the two of them together gel really well and I think it, it works fantastic. And I remember when I finished this, I, I was sitting in a cafe, I finished it and I thought, God, I could read more of that. And then I started um, The Picture of Dorian Gray after it and see for about a week, a week and a half, I could not get this book out of my head. It really sort of... It really sort of um, jived with me. Jived with me. <laughs> I hold on the Bee Gees. So I would highly recommend that because I swear to God it was really... I thought it was lovely. Nylon had me in tears at times but we'll say no more about that. The last one I'm going to show you which I would recommend is A Single Man by Christopher Risherwood. Um, as I've said before I like Christopher Risherwood's writing. I think it's really nice. Um, don't get me wrong, he does take his pen for flights of fancy and goes on a bit, but then who doesn't do that? Uh, and what this story is, is essentially it's a character called George, who is informed that his um, long-term partner has been involved in an accident. You see how that sort of affects him, he sort of starts to retreat from the world. He makes decisions about how the rest of his life is going to pan out, and you see if that comes to be, if that happens, and you see him sort of... Is that a spoiler? You see him sort of come out the other end, I suppose, and what happens. I think it's lovely. I think George is an excellent character. Um, like I say, I really like the writing, and I would highly recommend that. I've been watching a couple of my videos, and by the way, I'm going to stop saying fantastic and highly recommend, because I say it all the bloody time, do I not? So that's my recommendations. See if you've read any of these, let me know, because I'd be really interested to know what you thought, or if you're thinking about reading any of them, let me know that as well, and we can have a wee discussion down below. If you're interested, I will leave the details of each of these books in the thing for you to check out. So, there you go. Smashing. I hope to see you again, and uh, thanks for stopping by as always. Bye-bye.